So I'm here to talk to you about Cat. Has anyone heard of Cat before? A few. Has anyone used Cat before? Great. Okay. So we're going to talk about what we uh, what we're trying to do with Cat and talk about some of the new stuff we built since uh, the last Fast Project. Uh, I'm from Coordinates. Um, Coordinates is a geospatial data management platform, and we help uh, map wranglers get data um, from publishers, and we help people publish data, whether that's internally within a big, organiza big organization, or out to the public, or partners, or contractors. How many people here identify as developers? Would you call yourself a developer? A few. OK, that's good. And so. As a developer, you get used to these tools where you can uh, work across multiple branches and contexts. You can have your coworker come along and say, hey, I need you to look at this, and you kind of stop what you're doing and start doing something else for a little while. And you have these long-running projects that um, you work on in different branches. And you kind of trivially switch between them these days with, with pretty low overhead. And we do things like manage uh, production releases or software releases of our, of our Phosphor G projects. And we don't really think about it too much. It's just tools that, that work. And we have things like pull requests and code reviews. And we use those in our organizations. And we use them in open source with, with anonymous contributors and other things. And we have tools like automated testing and build and continuous integration and checks and all the sort of stuff that that we kind of take for granted in software. And so what we're trying to do with CARD is bring some of those um, ideas and concepts to uh, geospatial data. And we have some opportunities as well. So data integrity is, um, is kind of good. You, lots of organizations are still saving zip files of shapes to like uh, network drives and emailing around final 3.zip. And hands up if you've done one of those in the last year. And, the, and we look at things like uh, data science. And science in general is looking at, at reproducibility. Somebody publishing a paper, it's now expected, or starting to be expected, that they publish the code. Um, but we're also starting to um, see demands from being able to publish the data as well. And for authoritative sources or, or regulatory um, people who work in regulatory controlled environments, they need to be able to see when data was changed and who changed it. Um, and a lot of these things are the same stuff that we're used to in, in software. We, we don't even think about that. I can see that um, my friend Craig changed this yesterday at 2 PM and, and what he changed. And we should be able to do that for our geospatial data as well. Um, in terms of data supply chains, um, often data goes from one organization to another, but they never, ever, ever get any feedback on it. They don't get the fixes that get applied. They don't get, um, they barely even get suggestions, but they don't get improvements, and it's really hard to get some of these uh, trivial changes and errors corrected in, in data sets that are published. And the reality is people work across different ecosystems. And I'm not so much talking like Windows and Mac and Linux, but especially outside one organization, one company might work in, they're an ESRI organization, and so everything needs to work in ESRI. Another organization might be uh, Phosphor G Heavy, that's great. You might have a contractor who's um, doing specialist building stuff, and they work in AutoCAD, and that's what their industry works in, and it's a little bit naive to pretend otherwise that, that we don't need this, this ecosystem stuff. And the last thing is kind of atomic operations. So what do I mean by that? It means that I want to be able to exactly guarantee that I have the same thing as somebody else. Not mostly, not I, creating scripts to download zip files to try and compare changes, or hitting APIs, WFS requests over and over to like update my data from their data. We should be able to kind of guarantee that we're looking at the same thing. And so these are some things that would be useful for, for data as much as they are for, for software. Our versioning system should be able to take care of some of these things like coordinate system, people working different coordinate systems, people working different file formats, and take away some of that, that pain for us. 
So we developed Cart, and Cart um, is built on Git. So it's not trying to replace Git. We use the building blocks that um, decades of Git development have provided, and we adapt them for geospatial data. So a Cart repository is a Git repository. You can't look at it in a useful way using your text editor, but underneath it's Git. And so we can build on the shoulders of giants and take a lot of their, their stuff. In terms of distribution, we, we are batteries included. So um, you can download um, installers for Mac and Windows and Linux. And they'll work and they'll bring in um, the tools that, that form card, including GDAL and PDAL and other things, but they won't touch the rest of the stuff on your system. And that's really important for getting people up, up and running. We're about practical day-to-day -day use. And so that means we're not a big data solution. If you've already got bespoke tooling for your multi-terabyte tables, then CART's probably not right for you. But if you're running um, normal projects with normal data, up to kind of 100 gig vector layers, then uh, CART will work fine. We're open and free, and again, I say the ecosystem agnostic. We want this to work for um, Esri users as well as our friends in Fosfogy. So I'm going to do some demos. Um, these are a mix of videos and other stuff because of our, our slide policy. So we'll see how it, oh, it kind of goes. So we're going to start by uh, creating a cart repository. And if you're used to Git, then uh, you probably recognize some of these. Um, and so we've created an empty repository. And what does an empty repository look like? It looks like an empty directory. It's got a little readme that, that comes along with it that explains what um, you might want to do next and where you can go. And you can import data into CART from, um, in terms of vector data from lots of different normal formats. So I've got some shape files, and it's kind of found them. And so we're going to bring them in. And I'm going to add them to my, um, my repository. I'm going to bring in these three uh, shape files. There's three. Uh, data sets in the repository. It turns along and does that pretty quickly. And at the bottom it says creating G package working copy. And so oh. and so in our G package working copy, um, that's the part we edit and that's the part we view and then uh, cut goes from there. So now if we go to QGIS, we've got a geo package, right? So we can just open it in QGIS. And find some layers. These are the same uh, data sets that we just imported. And so we're going to add them to our map. They always put them in the wrong order. And it always comes up with hideous colors. I feel like I should talk to somebody about this with the QGIS t-shirt on. Every <laughs> single time. And so. Remember, these are, this is, from QGIS's perspective, this is just the data set. It's just the geo package. So we can go and edit things. And uh, what we're going to do is go and find a road, and we're going to change the name of the road. No, we're not going to change the name of the road. We're going to change the uh, lane count, because we've dual laned the road on this little island in the middle of nowhere. And we're going to save our edits. And then we're going to go back and see what uh, cut things are that. And so we're going to do status, and Cart's going to say, hey, you've changed it. And it's going to do a diff, and it says, hey, the attributes have changed from one lane to two lanes. We can get diffs in things like GeoJSON, and uh, we can get them in other formats as well, and you can see all the geometry differences and all sorts of cool stuff. And so we're going to save our change to the repository the same way you commit a code change. So we add a message, and it's created it. And when we look at the log, it's going to show my initial like import of data, and then after that, the, the change that we made. We can do branching in CART. So we can work in different branches. So we're going to imagine we're going to develop a, um, some new buildings on our island. So we're going to switch to a new branch. We're going to go back into QGIS, run our new branch now, which looks exactly the same as what we had, which is fine. QGIS isn't aware of this at this point. And so we're going to go forward, and we're going to add some new buildings. So again, we're just editing, adding some points. Splodge them around. And 
give one a name. And then we're going to add a new road as well. Now, within a cat repository, uh, we have multiple data sets. And data sets can be, can be different, and you can treat them differently if you want to. So I could commit changes from all my data sets if I make related changes, or I can uh, save uh, changes from one data set um, at a time. So we're going to add our wiggly, ziggly road. And it took me like three goes to remember the magic combination to stop creating a line. And uh, we're just going to make a, a name for the road as well. One lane. Be nice to fast forward my video, but never mind. Remember, this is all just regular QGIS editing. And you can do this in anything. You can do this in ArcGIS. Um, you can do this in PostGIS as well, and I'll show you a little bit about that later. So now we're back here. Cart status shows us what, what it discovered about our changes. And remember, this is the edits to the geo package. And uh, then we can do a diff again. We can see we've added this stuff. And then we are going to commit it. So we're going to add some buildings. And then we're going to add our roads. And so this is the same sort of thing a software developer would use to you know, make changes to their code, right? We can see our commits, and we can see when I did them, and who I am, what my messages were. Um, and we can see that, I think, so we're going to go back to our main branch. And when we go back to QGIS, we hit refresh, and everything's disappeared. But it's still there on the other branch, so we can switch back to it. This is OK. Um, and then we can merge our changes in. And we can add more messages and say why we made these changes. Maybe at this point they've been reviewed. And um, you can see that we've updated it, and all, all our history is there. And we can maintain multiple branches in parallel. So if we've got one stream of work going on over here on a data set, and we've got another stream, they can all live in different branches. So the concept of working copies in CART is where you work with and edit your data. So we support GeoPackage, PostGIS, Microsoft SQL Server, and MySQL. We support tables and vector data sets. Um, and different, different users of the same repository can work in different, uh, different ecosystems in different formats. And uh, Esri file data databases are uh, coming soon. So uh, last year we were at vector and table data sets up to about 100 gig each. You can have multiple data sets in a repository. As I said, you can have multiple working copy formats. And we do things like branching and merging and interactive conflict resolution. Now, this isn't magical, but if, you, if two people edit the same feature, then CART will help you walk through and decide whether you want one or the other or whether you want to create like a hybrid thing. And it does that for the geometries um, and the attributes. So um, it's worth, a, worth a, a look. So I'll talk about some of the new stuff. Uh, we have spatially filtered clones. So last year, you could cut your national size, say you had an uh, Italian data set, but you're only interested in the center of Florence, you didn't need to pull all that into um, QGIS and work with it every time. And now we can do that with the network as well. So you don't even download the rest of Italy. You just get the area you want to. But importantly, it's still part of the larger data set. It's not a copy. It's not diverged from it. If you do a fetch, you will get the updates relating to Florence, but you won't get the updates relating to Venice. And so this is kind of cool. They're still part of the same ledger repository, but you only have this small area that, that you're working on. We have a QGIS plugin. Um, so you can do a bunch of the commits and the branching and the logs and the diff viewing um, and the spatial filtering from QGIS. And so you can install the QGIS plugin from the plugin repo. And if you don't have card installed, it will help you install it. And we can add our, um, we've got this panel. We can add our stuff into it. Um, so we'll go and find our uh, repository. And you can see our layers have come up. We can drag them over to the map. 
They'll go another hideous color, and so on. We have uh, point cloud support. And so uh, this is built on cloud optimized point cloud. If you worked with, uh, if you went to Howard's presentation, you would have seen some of this stuff. But basically, we're allowing you to um, bring in uh, point cloud data and manage it. And you might say, well, my point cloud data comes from a provider and I never touch it. That's fine. But it still gives you the benefit of uh, synchronizing with other people. And it still gives you the benefit of spatial filtering. So again, if I have um, a point cloud data set covering an entire region, but I'm only interested in a small area, then it will uh, help me just pull down and work with the data I want to. And so I can do a spatial filter as part of my clone. And so this data set is from a Gua Blanca fault in Mexico. And it's about 6 gigs. And Cart decided that I only needed 112 meg that fitted in my little spatial belt. And so that's all that went to the remote and fetched. And you can pass in different files and stuff to specify your, your thing. The idea is to keep that as a project thing. And so raster and grid support is in my talk description as um, it was a little bit optimistic that we'd have it released. Uh, point clouds are a couple of weeks away. Raster and grids are probably a couple of months away. But again, it's cloud optimized GeoTIFF. It's built on exactly the same idea. And so we keep data in the original tiles and the original tiling scheme. We're not requiring you to input your data and it gets transformed into some magical super format. It's, it's full fidelity. And the idea is that tile metadata stays in the Git repository and we support, uh, we build on Git LFS to allow you to keep the tiles in something like S3 or Azure or Google, Google Cloud or whatever you're using locally. Um, because we're using cloud optimized point clouds and geotiffs, we can also do things like you have a small amount locally, but I want the rest of the data set streams to my QGIS or streams uh, to my processing pipeline. And so we're going to be able to enable that sort of feature really soon. Um, we have a Google Summer of Code student this year, um, and they have done a bunch of work. Amal has done a bunch of work around help and command line stuff. So we have um, tab completion of branches and remotes and data sets. And uh, we have a framework for improving our help and our documentation. So our roadmap stuff, some of this I've already talked about. Um, we've got ArcGIS Pro and FME plugins coming. We've got file database working copy. Rastering good data sets um, will be a little bit later this year, but um, built on CogTIFFs. Um, being able to better export your data back out again um, in terms of being able to say, At this, give me this revision as a shapefile um, because I need to send it to someone who um, works in shapefiles. And uh, we've got so some improvements on that. QGIS plugin um, is going to get a design facelift and a bunch of usability improvements. Um, I'm working on a guide to self-hosting repositories. Uh, cart rep remotes, uh, just Git remote. So you can push to GitHub. I wouldn't push your 100 gig data set to GitHub. They will get grumpy. But um, it's just a, a Git remote. There's nothing super special about it. But um, the guide will help you make sure it's um, efficient and help you set up things like the spatial filtering support. And uh, we also are improving our support for documents and licenses and metadata and stuff, because they, they should come along with your data set, and ideally styles and things. And so what we want to do is unlock it so that you can um, clone a repository and get a useful set of starting points for styles that maybe can work in different packages as well. And the other thing we really want to do is interlinking data sets. And so that means uh, I run a project repository, but I might get um, some data from somewhere else. And so if those people start using CART, um, then I should be able to just link their data set into my project. Um, and so that's something that's coming new. At Coordinates, we've um, battle tested this quite a lot. We've um, imported data sets up to that kind of 100 gig size. We've got tens of thousands of vector layers. And um, that's where we're at. Um, in terms of it does work. Often a part of those layers have over a decade of history of like regular updates and edits and, and yeah, it works, works really well. So that's the project details. You can find out more on the website. Please contact me. Um, I will also be outside after the session in the garden under a tree. Um, <laughs> if you want to chat uh, versioning for data or you have ideas or um, 
there's anything I can help with, um, our GitHub discussions, um, feel free to, to open something there or just get in touch and uh, we can see if Cart could help you solve some of your versioning problems for geospatial data. Thank you.